Hello everyone, we are back with another Clossy Approach series video, and today we have a volunteer double Atari. Uh, thank you for volunteering, um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. We're just going to continue with our single digit Q basics. Game resumed. All right, we've already said hello, have fun, so I'm just going to do cross, because that's what I like doing as whites. Okay, he does 3-4, so I like going 4-4. Four, four. I like doing the opposite. You gonna do Chinese, or what are we doing? All right. So one thing I could definitely do is start going over here to try to disrupt his uh, combination, because it looks like he's going for some sort of Kobayashi or maybe a two-space high kind of thing. So a lot of the times it could be fun to try to just go over here uh and uh break his combination however this leads to a really big uh fighting game so it requires heavily on reading um so i would say probably that is 5q plus um so for now i'm just gonna stick to just defending but that is an idea that you can consider if you're a big fighter and you want to make the uh, game reading heavy you can uh, think about that Okay, um, I think this one is a bit slow compared to the attachment, because we're single digit Q now, so we should be attaching. Um, so technically I can ignore this one, because if he plays 3-3, I just make a two-space jump. So it should be possible to ignore this. Uh, so I'm going to go take the Shamari, because that is the next big thing to do. And I'll go low, because I'm on my opponent's side. If you want to respond, um, their responses should be H4. And then you go, and that's fine. It's just uh, they have another stone. But you do have a base, so that's, that's probably also fine. Okay, so we still have Mei. Uh, we will want to come back here at some point, but for now... Uh, according to the AI, this lean is very big. Uh, so we can do this. We could also ignore, since it's still one-to-one, -one, we could also ignore and play the 3-3, three -three, which is also really big. Uh, and then Knight's move is the thing I would think about after that. Um, oh, actually, where is this thing? Uh, There's a program that I downloaded that I just remembered that I had. But I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> uh, it's something that uh, Dwyron actually recommended was to... It's some sort of pen tool. Uh, there we go. There we go. And then uh, this is something uh, Batsko, Dwyron, actually recommended was me to have something like this. Uh, so let's go this. I think it's, uh, just do that. Let's see. So I have 3-3. Three, three. I have lean. And I have that. Yeah, can you guys see that? Oh, crap. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, you can't see it. Oh, no, because it's, it's not a display capture. It's a window capture. Oh, well. Oh, well. Okay, um, all right, maybe next time. Chat, remind me next time before we start. I'll go ahead and erase all that. Yeah, because it's uh, not a display capture, it's a window capture. <laughs> It's okay. Um, all right, so he's jumping. So first things first, let's read. Push there, cut Atari, Atari there. That's pretty nice. But if I cut right here and he connects, I Atari, I do have the ladder. Um, am I okay with that? I think so. Yeah, I think I'm good with that.
So I think uh, what I just did here was, again, habits. Uh, before I did anything, I read the cutting points. A browser extension? That might be a good idea, Dizzy. Uh, so I, the habit here was he played a one-point jump, so I read the cuts. Uh, so read out ladder breaker and everything else, so... Uh, that's what it is. So yeah, if the, if you can cut cool, but don't ever just do it. Always read it before you attempt it. I think that's a big habit that you want to build here. Another thing I could have done was I could have also like looked at some other moves and then compared it to these cuts, which probably I should have done as well is took a little bit more time. All right, Atari or Nobi? It's by Atari. There's Aji in the corner, fight Nobi. I think Atari's fine. Um, I think it's the same thing. I'm just going to Atari. Uh, probably Nobi is better, but hey, we'll see. All right. And so far, so good. Nothing crazy yet. Um, another habit would be if I didn't know this Joseki. If I didn't know this, like he jumped. So I one I haven't seen in a long time. Usually it's push. So, okay, I had to read it out. Maybe I didn't know the result. Well, after this game, what I should do is look it up and figure out what variations I have access to. So every time there's a pattern that you don't know, the habit of looking it up after the game is uh, another really useful habit to build. <clears throat> Um, okay, so I'm alive. Uh, I'm pretty good. So, big move. Probably topside. So, I kind of want territory. So, I'm going to go here. I could have also 3-3, three -three, but I'm a little bit worried about him doing something on my left side. So, making my left side strong, because this is a Mii. Which means he can uh, play right here uh, in Sete. So just keeping that in mind, I want to keep the left side strong. Uh, but if you don't understand that idea, um, maybe it'd be better if you played like a extension right here or just fixed earlier on so you didn't have to worry about it. But I'm taking into account the the bullying black do right here and just making the left side stronger. Um, but probably it would be simpler if I simply had just finished the Joseki earlier for this move, for this move, and then went over here. Uh, then Black could have had a little bit more of an initiative, uh, but it would have been a simpler game, which might be easier for this level. Uh, so I, I've been, I've been watching some, uh, chess streams and I like how they can, um, show what they're reading with like arrows and stuff. I wish we had that in go <laughs> so you could show like, uh, like do, 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 or like numbers or whatever, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, like you kind of like the tools in the demo, uh, or the game review, but during live game, uh, that'd be kind of cool to be able to do, uh, during the game so I could show you guys. Like what I'm looking at. All right. So this one is just take. I could go here, but it's just a forcey move. I could push, but why? So let's just take. Yeah, the anal. Oh, so I have, would have to not disable analysis, and I could do it. 
Okay, I'm alive. So this slide is just so I don't get surrounded and he gets the right side. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll keep that in mind, MacDaddy, for next time. Um, the 3-3 three, three is really big. I should just 3-3. Three, three. Big move. This is like a really big move. It's like the last opening move. So I should just do it. It's really big. Okay. And we're just playing Joseki. Okay, so he's going for the old-fashioned Joseki, which is slightly good for white. Because now I have this peep, which will make the right side a little bit easier, especially without Anobi. So now there's potentially a cut in the future as well. Um, so the right side is getting big. So before reducing, I uh, definitely want to slide first to check the territory. Um, but let's see, I have peep. And then go to the third. I have slide. I could technically invade. Um, and then I have reductions like a peep, cap, shoulder hits. Probably shoulder hit here too. I could also attach right here. That might be more modern to there there. Um I think I can. I think I could attach Hane, Hane, connect Nobi, because Atari and push in, I can cut, he can Atari, and I Atari out, and then Atari in. But that's probably too much reading for a 9Q. <laughs> um, let's just keep it simple. Let's just slide. Slide is simple. Slide is simple. So I haven't talked about a slide a lot in this series, because usually slide is only important with bases. In this case, it has to do kind of with, uh, I guess you could call it the base of the position. Um, because he can surround me uh, right here and completely block this right side. So before I go in, I could just reduce it. Would ladder breaker be overplay? Um, I don't know what ladder you're talking about. I'm assuming this ladder. Atari there, Atari. Yeah, so you're looking at this letter. First off, is there a net? No, because you didn't know me. There's no net. Yeah, you should have known me and there would have been a net. Um, I wouldn't say it's overplay, but probably just make it so the ladder doesn't matter because you can check technically just jump and chase. Uh, now you have a lot of Aji. I'm not saying it's like, I'm not saying it's like a, a lot of stuff. I'm not, or I'm not saying it's nothing, but but it's also not the end of the world because uh, you're the one who played this position, so you kind of have to deal with it. If you have to fix your own move, then it was a bad move. So, for example, if you would have no-bead, that would have been a net, so you jumped instead. So if you, if you create a problem for yourself with your own moves that you have to come back and fix, then you want to revisit that. In your, when you review the game, you want to look for that, like, could you have just made a better shape so you didn't have to fix it later? So we uh, these types of moves I call uh, I don't really have a name for it, but basically uh, I I, I kind of think of it as you think you're getting more now, but you're actually getting less because later you have to spend more moves to fix it. So um, moves like these uh, look like they do more, but they actually do less because if you have to come back later, then you spent more moves overall. Uh, so that's that's kind of the thinking here. So you don't really have time to fix it. You're just going to have to deal with it because you created this position. You can't just go fix your own stuff because you just lose moves. Um, and since we're at single digit Q, we can't just lose moves. Now, to be efficient about it, I would probably think about shoulder hit for black here. I'm kind of telling black how to play, <laughs> but I'll be thinking about shoulder hit for black here. Um, since, since I told you that one, I'm going to go ahead and take it away from you. I'm going to go ahead and take it away from you. But that's what I'd be thinking about. Because rather than a ladder breaker, 
which is kind of like too uh too passive i would want to be active uh with my defense so i want to like make it so it's not worth it for them to do or it would create a bad position so like if they cut what's the bad thing that happens can i fix it while doing bigger things um and it's kind of like that double purpose idea which is not super great at single digit q because it's just you know a lot to think about but you kind of have to play at a higher level if you made the mistake in the first place i don't know if that makes any sense um by having bad shape you make the game harder for yourself which re by requiring more reading um and also creating more tasujis for your opponent so if you had played simpler shape you could have played simpler follow-ups does that make sense hopefully that makes sense okay so we fixed perfectly fine um so i'm going to push one more because i don't want the block to be sente oh i guess it's not sente but there's this is sente and i can just fix it so the block does nothing to me so i just fix problems in sente is all i'm thinking Okay, so we both have some influence. So probably I'm gonna pick my standard reduce while building idea. Okay. So my first instinct is the shoulder hit, but that's clearly an elephant's eye. So let's check this move. The response is usually a knight's move. Is that okay? Uh, I honestly don't know. yeah um you should always check the cutting points uh i uh, if you if you want to watch the series it's the most important thing to do it's uh single digit q at q level in general is you should always be reading these cutting points and so whenever you play you want to keep the cutting points in mind it's the most undervalued thing at single digit q is reading the cutting points before you play it's super 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 important okay so one two three four uh five i think this <laughs> love you I'm so glad you just wasn't doing anything. uh okay let's let's just classy approach it um Byo yomi one of these moves one of these moves feels like the answer what is the best shape here i don't know uh this feels maybe decent here i think what i'm doing here is actually exactly what i was telling you to do that you should have done with this l17 is i'm thinking about the cutting points and the shapes before i play so this is a good thing to train yourself to do is you want to think about the relationship between your stones. So you already have the concept. I want to build while reducing, right? That one's easy enough to do. But you need to think about what's the shape I want to do. So my first instinct was shoulder hit, right? But this creates an elephant size. So I read the cuts. I don't like it, right? So I'm trying to jump, but that doesn't feel like it does enough. So I try to knight's move. And that cut a point is possible, but it, like I would like to get one line further. So maybe a large knight's move. Check the cutting points. So I have a plan. If he pushes, I can tarry in the tiger's mouth and maybe fight him in my area. So I have a plan for the cutting point. Now, whether it's a good plan or not, I'll have to like see the result and review, but I'm constantly thinking about what are the cutting points here while still doing my job of reduce while building. And I want to try to do it as efficiently as I can while also taking into account the cutting points um, and everything else. Uh, so it's kind of a, it's just bringing all that together into a move. And the idea here is build that habit of checking your cutting points before you even place down the stone. Uh, that way you, you aren't surprised by it. Um, 10, 9, 8, just keep up 7, the same plan. 6, Can, 5, do, 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 4. That looks too dangerous. Uh, looks too, it just looked too dangerous to me. Like this black stone's too close and it's looked like I would get surrounded faster um that one was probably more experience i guess um because i had to like speed read that 
Okay, Nobi, check the Hane, definitely not. Yeah, just Nobi. Uh, I could have spent more time in the Bioyumi to pot potentially count, so that was a mistake on my part. I played too fast. Okay, do I want to respond to this? He can push Hane there. He can jump, push there, cut, run. Yeah, this Tasuji right here for black. Uh, looks like a good all or nothing move. Maybe not even all Ten, or nothing move, actually. It just nine, looks like So probably eight, I'll just go here. Seven, six, uh, five. Yeah, let's respond. It's fine. It's fine. I wanted to consider other stuff, but ran out of time. It's more important to read it correctly. Okay. Now, I'm not going to respond to Yose, so let's think about the big move. Largest framework? Probably mine. All right. Um, so I want to do a cool thing that I think a lot of you guys might like. I'm going to play this attachment because it's single digit Q. We learn attachments, Ten, and using attachments nine, to build Moyo eight, is actually a quite seven, an interesting tactic. Uh, but this is very much single digit Q because it's very reading intensive. Uh, so the re idea is when they Hane, you just reverse Hane. And you both build stuff. So, yeah, I think uh, this is an interesting idea. Just want to show off. I don't know if it's the best move. Shoulder hit might have been better, but I thought it'd be good, just a good lesson, just to show you guys the idea. So again, Hane, I could consider this if I was thinking about territory uh, and trying to make a Mii, but I think mine's fine. So I'm just gonna build. Okay, and then fix my cut. If they fix, you fix. And ta-da, Mayo! Okay, uh, now would be a good time to count, so let's go ahead and do that. I think we can count a single digit queue, right? Um, we can at least box count. So let's say 10, 15, uh, 20. We could take a period to do this. Um, so let's go 10, ahead and start doing this. 9, uh, 30, 8, 40, 50, 60, 7, 70, 6, 80, 6, at least. 5, 4, uh, probably 90. 3. Let's see, Two, 10, 20, one, 30, four periods 40, left. 50, 60. Oh, yeah, I'm good. So even if they 3-3, three, three, I still have reductions over here, so I'm good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. It's a good judgment call to make. Make sure that his is not getting too big. Okay, so here, first things first, take away the corner and the eye space. Now I actually have to kill the stone. So first I'm going to take away the eye space in the corner. Okay, because that's immediate life if they get in there. Uh, so now after I've done the obvious move, now I have to start using the killing tactics. Okay, so uh, keep them off the second line. Uh, can I go here? I think that's too much. So I have to go here. Okay, reduce the eye space from the second line. It's the same tactics uh, that we use to kill the 3-3. Three, three. Okay, reduce the eye space. Because we're at step 3, reduce eye space. I should be spending more time here. Um, I kind of already know the ideas that I want to do, though. Uh, but definitely you want to spend more a lot of time here. Okay, Tiger's Mouths are vital points. We have this peep uh, and this peep. Uh, this one's probably better. Then can he surround the stone? He can force it, but it should be fine. Uh, this one, I feel like he's just going to run this way too much. So just take this away from him. Okay, um, push, cut, Atari, connect, connect, 
Uh, and this is dead. Okay, he does get to surround me, but keeping him off the edge is probably good enough. I do need to uh, start watching this area as well. So potentially I could Atari right here and connect. That actually might be better. Because I'm not worried about one eye, I'm worried about two. So which one has a better future for black? Atari, connect. There, there. Uh, there, there, there. Ten. There, there, there. Nine. Jump. Eight. There, seven. There, there, there. Six. There. Five. Four. Three. This one looks better. Consider both, read as much as you can, make a decision. Okay. Uh, take sh pretty much the only move. Okay, I'm not worried about that. That is only one eye, and will ever only be one eye. Um, I can take the table shape vital point here. Um, I could just connect, which seems pretty strong. 10, 9, Yep, eight, so let's seven, kill it with strength. Okay. Um, one point jumps are where he wants to go. The tiger's mouth, I can Atari or push. So as long as he can't do any tiger's mouth and sente. Ten, nine, eight, seven, yeah, six, we're good. Five, four, Let's push on three, closer to white. Yeah, I can lower the volume. Sorry. Let me make sure the uh, desktops. Yeah, the desktops are muted. Uh, that one's not. Sorry, I had it coming off twice for you guys. Okay, Elven Sai is Knight's move to surround it. So, yeah, just keep going. Okay, we're just gonna block. Check our cutting. So, because if we do this one, we have two cutting points. This one's one cutting point. So it's less forcing moves. Yep. Just surround it, and it should die. All right. So let's just immediately make that a false eye. Actually, we don't need to lose the liberty. It's a false eye, no matter what. So let's just stay strong. Yep. Stay strong. That's all we have to do is stay strong here. Okay. Take the shape. Easy peasy. Uh, and then we're probably going to look at this tiger's mouth. Or this one. But this one is starting to surround. This one he can jump. So let's go here. Take the tiger's mouth. Just take the panookies. Take the tiger's mouths. Take the one point jumps. That's how they live. Forcing moves and tiger's mouths. That's how they will make life. Okay, so I can Hane, but the shape looks questionable. What if I Nobi? Can he Knights move? Push their cut. Tari, there, there, there. That's probably too much reading. Uh, let's Hane. 
there. Ten, Nobi, nine, Tigers, eight, seven, Fix, six, Push, five, Hane. Too four, much reading again. Three, this one's more solid, though. <laughs> I feel like I'm reading too much. Uh, but reading's important. Reading's important. Just read as far as you can. And then just keep pushing yourself. Read as much as you can, as far as you can. If you want to improve your accuracy, um, you need to do go problems. You want to <laughs> you want to improve your speed. You need to do. So the way the way I see it is, for single digit Q players, you need to do single digit Q problems to learn new tactics. To improve your speed, you need to do double digit Q problems in thirty seconds. Um. And then as you get stronger, you want to do the single digit Q problems in 30 seconds. Seven, six. Um, so for Dawn players, what you would want to do is do single digit Q problems, like on the one on one way cheese spreadsheet that we have. And if you don't have that, uh, just uh, check our Discord. Uh, we will be happy to give that to you. It's freely available for everyone. Um, but. For Dawn players, do the single digit Q problems and then do like 100 to 200 a day. Uh, and just do them in like 30 seconds. Like get your accuracy to the point where you can read single digit Q stuff in 30 seconds. Uh, just stay connected. I'm just playing defense right now. Uh, so I don't like I could consider the cut, but like why bother? Just defense, focus on defense. Thank you for the follow, Fami Colin. Hello, Fasifu. Thank you for the follow, uh, to Russell. I wish it told me like when people subscribed on YouTube. That way you'd be like, thank you for the sub. <laughs> Shout out to the YouTube. Okay, uh, my first instinct is here. This is the one point jump for Black. So push there, push. I think I'd fix that would be nice. So that would not be good. Nine, so let's just push eight, this first. Seven, six, five, four. And then block the jump. I wonder if Black could have done stuff. I don't know. All right. And that should be a kill. It seems scary, but... Uh, it's a, one, of the, one of the things you have to learn. And if your opponent does it to you, um, and you struggle with uh, dealing with it, um, you could play on uh, Fox Wei Chi, the Chinese ghost server. Uh, they like to invade his stuff a lot, too. And then from there, it's just, you know, trial by fire. You got to practice, 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 practice. And then review and review and review. Yeah. Um, Is there a way to survive in that area? Uh, Not without starting at the 3-3 three, three or something. Uh, you, you can't, like, if it's sealed like this, you can't expect to live in there without Aji. Uh, that's probably too much. Otherwise, like, sealing this would never be a good strategy if it's always invadable. But once an area is sealed, then the inside should die. Uh, with the exception of like Aji in the corner, because <laughs> there's like a peep right here and then a 3-3, three, three, and potentially that can make a co or make life. Ten, um, nine, yeah. Eight, seven, six, five, um, four, three, two. I'm just gonna take. Now I have two eyes, so it'll never be a capturing race. That's the only thing I'm worried about right now. Uh, don't need to respond. Yeah, I'll go ahead and respond. That's push, and then push, 
push and then cut. Yeah, I'll go ahead and respawn. There might be cutting points there. And if there's a might, I'm not even going to... Hey, Zenith! Welcome, welcome. Uh, if there's even a, a potential, I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah, it's hard to make a co without Tiger's Mouths. That's why I say if you need to kill something, attack it from the Tiger's Mouth. Uh, because that the Tiger's Mouth is where things start going wrong. Alright, so here, there's not a Moyo right here, because it's sealed, right? So this is just a few points. So I need to get to push. So let's start playing some Yosei. Okay. Boop. Mm, boop. Just start my Yosei. Okay. Uh, is there a clamp? See, clamp, go down, cut. And then if they Atari, of course it dies. So they have to cut and capture the stone. So it's the question is, can I do anything with two stones right here? Atari, there, Hane, my two stones over here die. Nine. Mm, Eight. Probably not Seven. any Six. single digit, Five. any 9Q thing. Four. So let's just reduce. Three. Uh, Yeah, let's just reduce. I don't think I can do anything that I could read a single digit queue. There might be some confusion stuff right here that I could do that peeps it indirectly, but eh, not worried about it. Not worried about it. Let's just reduce like normal. Actually, I think this is Sente. Um, yeah, so this is super Sente, so I'm just going to keep pushing. Like, that's the entire area. Hmm. I feel like now there's something with this, but it's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, so let's push right here. Because that's Sente. We're just going to do all of our Sente. Push. Okay. Push. Now, I believe I can Hana here. Because if a Hana... Cut Atari there, cut. And this only has two liberties, and there's no way to ladder this. So it's kind of like a Yosei Tosuji. Uh for a point. <laughs> um I'm not sure if this is single digit Q or not though. Ten, nine, eight, Let's just go here. Seven, I'm not uh, I don't know. I don't think it's single digit Q. <laughs> but li little Yosei Tosujis like that are super useful. If your opponent doesn't know Yosei. There's a lot of uh, little Tsujis that can gain you several points at a time, especially if they play it wrong. Uh, so if you want to improve your Yosei by like 10 points or even like 15 points, I highly encourage you to get some uh, Yosei books um, and do Yosei problems. Or maybe find a Yosei problem set on OGS. They might have one. Let me check really quick. Uh, puzzles. Search for Yosei. Yosei SDK. I, think, I guess I put some up. Uh, in 2019, I put some up. Uh, there's only seven of them, though. So actually, no. Um, so if anyone wants to make that, that'd be great. Um, uh, 10, 9, 8, um, 7, 6, 5. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Go Books, uh, recommendation would be Yosei. Okay, I think this one should be easy enough to see now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Because I think this one's easy enough to see now. Mm hmm. Uh, 
Ah, uh, maybe I cut wrong. I should have pushed. <laughs> oh, I know I can do something. I know I can, but... <sighs> fine. Fine. Fine, 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 fine. I know there's a Tsuji here. Uh, I gotcha. Um, yeah, I think a book on Yosei would be pretty good for most people. I would say, like, you need to have an idea of the opening in the middle game before you start working on Yosei. Because if you keep dying, then it doesn't matter. Yosei doesn't matter. You need to stop dying, right? But from once you can, like, get to the end game on a regular basis, uh, Yosei becomes, like, extraordinarily important. Like, it becomes as important as, like, uh, everything else you're going to learn in this game. Which I guess was goes without saying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Yosei is worth probably if you're it, it, actually I know there's some people that watch this series um, that have been going from 20Q to single digit Q and likely in the future as well. Uh, if you're improving really fast, I guarantee you you can improve your Yosei by at least 20 points. Uh, I already I already let you fix the Tsuji. Ten. That's okay. Nine. Eight. Seven, um, six, I'll go here. Yeah, that's Oops. Oopsie. Oopsie. Cutting points. Most important thing at single digit Q. Okay, we're just going to block. Easy peasy. All right, and just keep reducing. Oh. Is this... Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Push. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Uh, I want a Hane right here, but after he blocks and blah, 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 all this finishes, after all this resolves, uh, there's a Nose to Suji, so that's annoying. Ten, Can I fix? Nine, eight, seven, oh, I need to block this five, up here. That's big. <laughs> that's a monkey jump. <laughs> that's a pretty big move. Um, uh, can't do that without the liberty, unfortunately. Can push first, but it doesn't matter. Does not matter. If you connect first and then push later, they might sometimes block and give you Sente. So it'd be better connect and then just push later. Little mind tricks. Mind tricks. Unless it's like the very end of the game, like, and there's nothing else for them to do. See, I, I still get it anyway, but I gave them the chance to lose Sente. Uh, I'm going to fix right here. Just so I can start doing other stuff. Okay. Okay. This is becoming big. Uh, is that Sente? Tari there. Looks Gote. That is unfortunate. Okay. Um, do I have to start blocking now? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, yeah. 4, 3, 2, 1. Gotta start blocking now. <laughs> mm, 
Is that Sente? That is not Sente. Okay. So I don't do that, so I can block right here. So I can't do anything. Tar there, tar there. Nope. Okay. Always read your cutting points. Watch those goose tasujis. Okay, push. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Uh, this is Gote, but the only other center I have is right here, but I kind of want to do that. So it's throwing Gote. This is a big Gote because it might set up a Goose to Suji later. Or I can just get a point. Okay. Um, I guess just fix. Just fix. I kind of want to do this, but it's Gote, so. Let's just do that. Okay, and then take this one. This is a big goate. All right, um, Satari. This is 1.5. That's one, and this is one. I guess it's 1.75. Uh, ah. Huh. It was actually two points. Okay, cool. Um, this is a point, so this is bigger. This is a point and a half. This is two points, because Sente. Uh, losing a lot of points, and you'll say that cut didn't work. You gotta read it before you fix it. Habits are important. Okay, so let's fight the cow. Fight the cow. And if you're like, oh, I'm you're already ahead. Why are you fighting the cow? No. My teacher told me always fight for the point. Always you need to even if you're ahead, you like you still gotta play the correct moves. Even if you're ahead. You always fight the cow. Always fight for that last point. Okay. Um I think this one's better. I'm trying to think co threats in the future co threats. I think this one's less co threats. Okay. Uh, where's my co threat? Where's my co threat? Here's a good one. Uh, I like this one better, though. This one gives me more. Uh, you're supposed to go for the biggest co threats first, though. So this one's pretty large. Or this one. <clears throat> this one first. This one might lose this one. Okay, duped. I guess this one's bigger than three stones. That is definitely Sente. Boop.
Yep. That's a good one. And also gives another kill threat. Boop. Mm -hmm. I believe this one is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty big. Atari. We have one, two, is that Sente? I connect the Ataris. I fall side it. The Ataris this way. It's fall side. He nobies. I connect. Oh. Uh, does he get one point for the capture? I'll give you that because I think the capture might be worth a point. I forget the math on that. Uh, Atari, Tanigi. Uh, and Tanuki, Tari, there, there, there. No, I think I, I think I, I was right the first time. I think it wasn't a point. Okay. Boop. A twelve. Yeah, he has a lot of cut threats in this deck group. <laughs> Uh, that is very sente. Hmm. Boop. Running out of code threats. Only got a few more. Only got a few more. <sighs> All for a point and a half.
you have one. Oh, time. Thank you for the game. All right, so just so we can see the impact of USA, because it is important for this level to understand it. Okay, so we started Yose on this turn. So white is up by 58 points. Uh, and at the end, white is up by 80 points. Um, so 21 and a half. Okay, so let's, uh, so Yose is very important. Now, realistically, uh, it's, you're not gonna be able to improve your Yose by 20 points. Um, that just takes a lot of time. You're not going to be able to just like study it for a week and improve it 20 points. But improving it 10 points is very reasonable. Or even 15 points is potentially reasonable as well. Um, so just to show you the power of Yosei. Power of Yosei. Uh, okay, so let's review this game. Review started. All right. Do, do, do. Uh, if I wanted to go here and let black do that, that's fine too. I think this is probably easier to use. Uh, for black though, exchange here. So it's sente, and then you can respond. And then it's still third line, fourth line. Still fine. Mm -hmm. Normally it's here. Like that. Or jump here. Uh, but it's not like this move isn't something to think about. I just haven't seen it in a long, long time. Here, pass, there. Okay, yeah, one is a bad move. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought it might be quite interesting, but apparently it's a bad move. Uh, this says good... Okay, so if you play here... It leads to this, which is this, which is this, which is this. <clears throat> Black might need a ladder block for this position first. This requires a favorable ladder, yeah. This is if the ladder, yeah, good for Black. So this is good for Black from the Lessons in the Fundamental of Go. Uh, but I wait here. Uh, this is a mistake. Okay, I didn't even punish it correctly. But yeah, it's uh, probably not a normal Josegi. <clears throat> you knew the Joseki was... Okay, hold on. So you knew the Joseki for the corner, but you were scared to use a Joseki against the Dawn Flare. So you instead to go outside to use no Joseki against a Dawn player. I feel like there's a flaw in the plan to uh, try to improvise a corner against a Dawn player and make it like... Because whenever you like go outside of Joseki knowledge, it becomes uh, reading and judgment. Reading and judgment. Exclusively reading and judgment. Um, Josekis are better against stronger players than trying to improvise. Now, if you want some trick move Josekis or some unconventional Josekis, that would be fine, but make sure you study those, right? But not using a Joseki at all is probably going to backfire. Now, I could have punished this better, but I still think this is perfectly fine for it. Okay, and again, I'm looking at like this kind of stuff. Um, is why I was like, maybe, uh, maybe uh, this stone was making me nervous, actually. Is why I chose this instead of, like, doing something like this. Because, like, now what? Maybe I just go here, and you just fix, and then my stone's in a weird position. Uh, so the lean on P4 is a common move if black tanukis. So I would definitely study that one. But again, like I said at the start of the video, like anytime you don't know a Joseki, like go look it up after the game. It's it's really good habit. 
learn Josekis one at a time. As And th that way it's relevant Josekis. It's Josekis that happen to you. Instead of like trying to say, okay, I saw this in a pro game once, but no one plays it at your level, that's not a Joseki that you want to learn right now. You want to learn the Josekis that are relevant. And then you constantly learn new Josekis. You don't ever stop that. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of Josekis. Um, so yeah, I actually kind of like that you fixed me here, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm not sure what you're after here. Kind of getting Moyo, I guess. So I guess it's fine. But I just want to play the big move. I was actually a little bit worried about this because I don't know this one very well. <laughs> I was like, well, guess we're going to have to read. Um, so, but I was thinking, I, I can't remember if you can do this in Obi or not against this move. Maybe, like, you, you can't unless I hunt. I don't know. I don't know that one well enough. Uh, but you should probably go here and then just revert it. This one is uh, the old pattern, and the old pattern we now know is uh, slightly good for white. Especially if you jump right here, you saw the Kadaji is just annoying. Alright, so I played shoulder hit, just reduced. That was the takeaway your move. Um, I kind of like this one. It fixes quite quickly, but you could also go here. Okay, and I'm just building. I thought about this, but I thought this result might... I didn't really have a follow-up to this. Like, maybe I got Hane. But, like... I don't know. Maybe it's fine. Maybe it's fine. Maybe it's not. Hey, see, it's it's tricky. It's tricky. Uh, so I was like, nah. Then I considered the one-point jump, and I thought that was too passive. So I consider the two-space jump, and then peep, and then uh, here. So I consider the knight's move to try to push it while building. But then knight's move. So I was like, okay, maybe here. That's how I ended up at this one. And then I was reading that that didn't seem that bad for me. Like, I could fight this. Um, so I'm reading the cuts and just trying to make good shape. Why S8 instead of S9? Um, because if I go S9, now I'm kind of invested in this area a bit. Well, I guess it doesn't. I guess this one doesn't work. Normally this works. Normally the Aji is too much. I assumed the Aji would be too much. <laughs> so you might be right. <laughs> uh, I was just trying to like make one. I was all I was trying to do is I was trying to get to this move, or get up here, and I didn't want him blocking with some Aji. So I'm like, okay, let's just kill the Aji and then go play here. But if that works, it works. Uh, so probably black just goes right here. Uh, you might be right. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. I was just trying to block it because uh, I wasn't even looking over here. I was looking at reduction, but probably locally you're right. Uh, I did consider this one to keep pushing while building, but uh, if you look at the this stone, you can see this looks a lot safer than the one over here did. You compare that to... See, the line is straight up and down versus this one where the line is like right here. You see how it's an added angle? So it's I feel a lot more trapped in this one than this one. This one, black feels more trapped than me. Even here, I could I could even cut. Like this one, black, black feels a lot tra more trapped. This one, I feel a lot more trapped. Like, it's scary. I could still cut, but you see it's a lot more difficult to read. So I'm like, eh, no, no problems. Just jump. Um, so here I think black was making a mistake blocking because whites is bigger than blacks. And so in the classy approach, you want to play on the largest framework. So if you want to deal with whites, then maybe just go deal with it like this or go in now. Like, I think now, if you want to deal with whites, you need to do it now. Because if you build yours and I build mine and mine is bigger, then destroy both. But why build yours and me build mine if mine is bigger? It just doesn't make sense. Here I was just showing off an attachment idea. So it's just a new, another tactic to learn. Uh, but invading at this point is way too late. Uh, if you're going to invade, you have to try to use the Aji here. But I already was planning to let you live in the corner. 
Like when I counted, I didn't really care if you lived in the corner. I was gonna do that and then like maybe clamp and reduce. I thought uh, I was ahead with this board, so I, I didn't care. But if you go here, living on the edge is like impossible here. After I seal it. Like where's your force Even if you go like right here, um, where do you go? There's nowhere to go. So if you wanted to deal with the Moyo, you need to deal with it when I start building it. You need to say, I'm going to play in the biggest framework. I'm not going to just build mine and let them build theirs when theirs is bigger. Because if you realize at the end of the variation, oh, mine's smaller, well, that means you're not seeing what's ha going to happen. It means you're not playing on the largest framework. You're not reading ahead. You're just kind of like, I'm just going to do my own thing and then deal with the consequences. And sometimes those consequences are you lose the game. So this is a... This is a good all or nothing move, but it is an all or nothing move. At this point, you're going to re like you're going to resign if this dies is the idea. Like if that dies, it's over. Um, now, if you just play out Yose, you're, it's probably over as well. In games with single digit you survive. Ah, well, this comes from you got to you got to die to learn. You got to lose to learn. And, uh, so. Uh, that's why. I, I, I understand, I understand, um, I understand that mindset. Like, it, if it works, why would you not do it, right? But, if we want to learn, then we need to learn why this move doesn't work. So, what I teach is I normally say, don't do this in the first place, and then build the area. Like, you, you need to play white's moves, not black's moves, because... If you don't do do this in the first place, and you can prevent this position in the first place on this turn by playing on the largest framework, follow the Clossy approach, and you you won't get into that position in the first place if you're following the Clossy approach. But as white, you will get into this position by following the Clossy approach because as white, you will build a big framework, and then your opponents are going to go in. However, it's easier to learn how to kill and how to play correctly than it is to stop playing the wrong move and once your opponents start killing you because instead of thinking oh like here it's like oh i built the area now i just need to learn how to attack but the the route that you're going is oh i'm this move works but what when your opponents start killing it you need to think oh or you you're going to start thinking oh how could i have played differently to live in there but you're not supposed to live in there. Like that that that's fundamentally wrong. You're not supposed to live after it's sealed. Um so rather than learning or trying to rather than you thinking that I should have played something different to live, you need to realize that you're not supposed to live and when your opponent's live against you, then that means you need to learn how to attack. So that way you're learning in the proper direction instead of building a bad habit right now, which is kind of why I teach you not to do this in the first place. Is when you're learning a bad habit right now, it's harder to break a bad habit than it is to learn the correct response. However, I know a lot of people get frustrated this part of the game where they say, I know they'll be playing like white and they'll be like, I know that this is the correct plan, but my opponents go in and they always live. And so it never works for me, and it, it makes me mad, blah, blah, blah. It, I can't retrust it. I can't trust the basics. Uh, I can't, I'm not strong enough to kill this, even though I know I should. And you get upset about it. But that's what we call the trial by fire. You have to, like, go lose a lot of games to gain the experience and then review those games to learn the proper ways to play. So in other words, the only reason I can kill this stone is because I've lost enough games to my opponent living in here that I eventually learned what they need to live, so I just take it away. So by losing those games, I learned this. Um, now, you do also have to, like, going back to your comment, just because a plan works against your level doesn't mean it's a good plan. However it's really hard to know which plans are not good plans. 
Yeah, exactly, Dizzy. I love that. You don't you trade rank for a free lesson. It's really hard to know which plans are not good plans at the higher levels and they only are plans that work at your level if no one tells you. <laughs> like it it's like so hard to know. Um that comes with game reviews, lessons, uh lectures, books. Uh basically someone stronger than you has to show you. Uh unfortunately there's no easy there's no easy way to do that, right? You either have to have someone stronger explain it to you, or you have to get strong enough that you start dying and then die enough times that you realize you can't live in there. And so, and so that that technically takes longer than someone just telling you. But those are the two ways to learn it. So I won't say that this idea is bad on you because if it works against your opponents, of course you should do it, right? It, it, it makes sense. However, I'm letting you know now that technically after the position is sealed, you're not supposed to be able to live without some forcing moves, some sort of exchange. If there's no exchanges and no forcing moves, you're not supposed to live. Now, from that knowledge, you have to learn on your own, right? So you have to learn, well, how do I deal with this in the first place? Well, you're not supposed to let it happen, uh, which we talked about playing on the biggest framework. How do you kill your opponent? Well, I showed you how to kill in this game. I, I took the tiger's mouths, took the one point jumps, et cetera, right? So you, it, so you start with, this is like what this, what the answer is. And then you get work on the process of how to, how to get to that answer with moves. If, uh, hopefully that makes sense. So I understand that, that this works against your level. So that doesn't mean it's a bad move for your level. And I want to stress that bad moves are relative to your level. I don't care if a pro says it's bad. It's relative to your level. But I'm letting you know going forward that this move should die once you get strong enough, your opponents are going to start killing it. Uh, eventually. So if you want to invade, use forcing moves that create a combination. But I would say a bigger lesson is it may work right now, to let your opponent build and then invade. But technically, if we're building good habits for the higher ranks so we don't get stuck later, it'd be better to take our time and just learn how to deal with it now and just destroy both. I, it would just be better to play the proper moves now and go a little bit, uh, win a little bit less games. But overall, we'll get stronger faster because when you're, you're winning right now, but once you get to a point where they can kill your stones, you're going to have to learn all that anyway. You're going to have to learn how to reduce and do all this anyway. Except now it's going to be harder because your opponents are going to be stronger. So you're going to get stuck for longer than if you had just learned it now. So I'm going to encourage you to learn this now. Um, yeah, so I think that will conclude our video for today. Uh, I think there's a lot of good lessons in this video. And yeah, I just showed how to just poke the eyes out, poke the eyes out, poke the eyes out. Uh, if you are struggling to poke the eyes out, a good mini game that you can play is a game where you fill up the edge of the board with black stones. Yeah, you just fill up the whole edge of the board with black stones and let someone stronger than you, like many, like at least five ranks stronger than you, play white and try to kill them in the center. And the game, the mini game is if they make one living group, they win. And if they don't, you win. So it's a really good exercise. However, they, there has to be a rank difference because if your opponents, if you play someone your level, they should die every time. Uh, and if they don't, well, then that means you need to learn how to poke out their eyes. But that's a good exercise if you wanted to practice that too. Um, yeah, so with that, I think we'll conclude the Classy Approach series video. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.